Okay, so this is the last section, and um, I tried to keep everything live so that I wasn't doing cutaway cutaways, and you didn't miss out on anything. I'm recording these for people who are just getting started, never maybe used paper clay before. It's uh, it's helpful to have the um, the step by step, like the fly on the wall behind me, as best I can manage, but. Um, yeah, I was hoping to keep it shorter than this, but it's hard to sculpt a face this big because unlike a little tiny face, you've got a lot more surface area to smooth. And the eyes on this decided to be a real pain in the tushy, so I had to keep adjusting them. Anyway, I'm going to rewind about three, four minutes, and we'll start right back in again. See you shortly. You couldn't see what I was seeing, but there was a little more thickness on that spot right there than there was anywhere else. So I was taking it down so the two lids match a little better from one side to the other. Not expecting perfect symmetry, but Close. Close would be nice. Oh, sorry. I was bringing it close so I could see. Just trying to smooth that. Now that divot, if it stays, is not the end of the world. Because I can fill it in with some with a slurry of clay and water. It is real thin. You want to make it real thin like a mashed potato almost and then sort of just paint it on to fill a little divot like that instead of making yourself crazy right now trying to smooth it without misshaping the rest of it. But paper clay can be tedious to sand, so I'm not saying don't smooth as much as possible because sanding can take forever. At least it can feel that way. Okay, we're getting there. I'm just taking the bridge of the nose and softening it a hair. I'm just kind of running my finger across it, smoothing it into the brow a little bit more. A little bit of water goes a long way. And as it starts to dry you can keep doing this and just keep smoothing your surface. Just make sure, like I said, your hands are clean. If not, you're going to create more texture than you're eliminating. <clears throat> Make sure you're not lifting it up off the surface anywhere. You're also not applying a ton of pressure. You're, you're literally just the ever slightest amount of touch like you would if you were trying to tickle somebody. Just, you know, just gentle little rub. Is the clay underneath is firming up already and if you push here it's gonna move over there too because we've been at this for over an hour so there's definitely 
some kind of clay on the inside that's much firmer than this clay that's on the outside which is good because that's how you want it to dry and that way it's less likely to crack See? I think I'm going to end up becoming ambidextrous trying to, to shoot these videos. <laughs> Even with a camera looking at it from both sides. at it with clear eyes and this cheek is full this cheek is not I think I like the look of the fuller cheek better so let's add some clay to this side uh, let's see if I can give you a there we go, head on shot so you can see what I'm seeing. Can you see we're quite full here and not so full here. I think this side is more softer and more feminine than this side. So I'm going to add a little more clay through here and into the jawline. Okay, we don't want to add too much. Let's come here and here, and I'll probably take some of that back away again. Oh, something in the clay there. Get that back out. Come on, let go. Little black speck of something. Determined. Okay. Now I have to keep watching to make sure that I'm not adding too much clay or I'm going to be right back where I was with no symmetry. And you can go back and forth like that until you've made yourself nuts and ruined your face. So just go easy and make sure You're not adding too much at a time. Trying to get a little bit of symmetry. Trying to figure out what is different on this side than on that side. Do I need to add more clay or just move the clay? This clay is lovely and soft right now, so it's cooperating very nicely. Okay. Yep, I can see. I still need more fullness here on the apple. Maybe not that much. Like right in here. Need to fill a little. Okay. Right here I had to fill a little. 
I would move that camera closer, but it's um it's on a thing if I bump it. I'm gonna lose it. Let's just see if I can't mount it on the tripod. Maybe that would let me get it closer. If it won't stick, it's because the clay is dried. A little water, and then it will stick. Use this one. There to be a flat lip here because we have a flat lip along the edge of this lid that is pretty obvious on humans. So just letting it be rounded doesn't really work. You have to create that, which is hard to do with the paintbrush, so you will have to use another tool to put that lip there. <sighs> and I'm having right left issues right now. My right ear left. <laughs> Alright, that's pretty good. I can amend it slightly with um, with the tools and a slurry of clay afterwards. And an exacto knife <laughs> if I have to. And don't forget the corner of the eye should indent. The lids should follow the shape of the eyeball. So there should be a little bit of a swoop right there. And then again over here. And it, it 
curves and follows the shape of the eyeball. More, more like what I had in mind. Not an angelic face, but for two hours, it's not terrible. Now I'm going to stop, I think, and let this dry a bit. Make sure we're not going to end up with any cracks. So I don't usually rush from beginning to end sculpting a face this quick. But I think I'm going to do this as a series of videos. So this will be the first one. And then when I come back, we'll cover if I need to sand and move on to painting this face. I appreciate if you guys like the video, if you would click the like button, because, you know, that lets me know that you're enjoying what I'm doing here. Encourage me to make some more. It amazes me how many people don't click like. I don't understand why. As a creator, as a person who has anxiety, believe me, it means a lot to know if you like it or not. So, click like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll get back to this on the next video. Let me go to a full screen here, and... This is where we are for now. You have to picture her with lovely eyelashes and makeup and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to let her sit here and I might do a teensy bit more smoothing, but not much. And it's all the same thing. Just wet your finger. And if you see, oops, a blemish, just rub it away hair from somewhere. Get rid of that. Okay, yeah, I'm going to let this sit and call it a day for now. Okay, so it's hard to record with a glare on the um, this shining white paper clay, so I'm adjusting the cameras again, trying to deal with shadows, as you can see, and too much light or not enough light. I keep turning lights on and off, trying to find a happy medium, but it's like, this seems to be the best I can get, um, balancing the light that I need for you to see my, see what I'm doing based you know, without the glare from this white, throwing the white balance of the camera off. Okay, so this is allowing me to see what I need to see. And then if my tool is in the way, again, you should be able to see what I'm doing from the other angle. Like I said, I just have to figure out how to deal with the light issues. So we got two different angles here, and hopefully that's going to be enough for you to see what I'm doing. Now, let me see. We get a close-up here, and you can see the face. I did a little bit of sanding. I took a little bit of the meat off here and here, and I evened up the jawline. It was a little wider here. 
there was a little crack that formed here and I filled that crack and I actually accidentally scratched it while I was getting the new clay on but I'll, I'll sand that off in a little bit um, I still have to do this side as you can see where the gap is and close that in I'm relatively ha happy with the uh, the tracking on the eyes uh, this lid needs to get built up a little bit to match that side because uh, I think I like well, maybe I'll take this side down we'll see um, but they seem to be level and looking in the same direction mostly <laughs> but I need to fix the corners I need to fix the corner of the eye so what I'm gonna do is grab a little bit more clay and it's not going to take much my paintbrush which is here in the water okay I want to wet this just slightly you don't want too much water take my clay and drop a little ball of clay into the corner Put this back in there so it stays wet and I'm going to take this clay and basically just shove it into that corner right there make sure this isn't too wet you don't want to turn this into mush and I'm going to fill in that curve in the corner of the eye a little bit more which gives the eye a nicer shape Okay, and brings the tear duct down where it should be. The, um, the eye should slope slightly downhill. And as you can see, they're not doing that. But that's because I wasn't trying to do the tear duct corner. It's like I said, it can get really mushy really quick. So... And I might add a little more clay to this side of the eye, also um, underneath of here, and backfill that a hair. Okay, now I'm going to use this tool, which is just a little flat. It's flat on the one side and slightly rounded on the other. Just a little metal tool. Um, I can't remember who made this. There was an artist selling these at a show, and I bought one. They're, they're real small, so they're good for getting into these corners. And I'm just going to push up slightly on that shape there in the corner. Okay, and then I'm going to push a little tiny ball of clay and you can pre-make the ball whatever size you want it to be or you think will fit and then let it get dry and then while the clay the rest of the clay is wet you can take and um, and if the piece you drop in looks like it's too big just pull it out make it smaller but you can just take and drop it right in that corner and work the clay around it Oops. and get uh, get it the way you want it okay that'll work make sure you can still see and there And you want it to stay in the right shape. Try not to beat it up too much. And you can grab the little paintbrush. Try to tuck it in there a little better. Oops, wrong end. I tried uh, pre-baking some tiny little tear ducts with polymer clay. <laughs> That was a fun experiment. It was very hard to keep track of where they were. 
Okay, I'm going to add a little clay right there because I don't like how that's shaped. Now, right here, adding extra water to this clay won't hurt it because I want it to uh, get a little more slip-like. So I can move it without misshaping the rest of that lid. There was just still a little bit of an indentation there that I didn't like. That's the other thing with paper clay that is underrated. You can easily change the entire shape of its face. Change the look of, of its face. You can even change its ethnicity just by adding a little bit of clay. And unlike polymer clay, you don't have to worry so much that it's going to have a line differentiating where you added clay or that you're going to trap air between this very thin piece you're adding and the clay you already baked. Which, until you really, really get used to polymer clay, um, adding in seeming clay can be a mess. Especially if you um, get just the littlest bit of dirt in there. It is not forgiving. It'll turn a funny color and you will have a distinct color line between the old clay and the new clay. And there's really not a lot you can do about it except paint the entire piece with a very um, opaque paint that obscures the entire beautiful nature of the clay, which... I mean, that's not the end of the world, but if your plan was to use the natural uh, translucency of the clay in your favor, that goes right out the window. Okay, let's not go too much. I don't want her to look like she's got a heavy, older woman's brow. Or not brow, but um, lid where it starts to be a little saggy looking. I want her to look youthful, but that looks pretty good. I like that. Okay, try to get it oriented straight up and down for a second. Much better eye shape. The new one. Okay, now is where we play that game. What's different? When you are looking at a face to try to achieve symmetry, you are not looking at what is the same. You want to play that game of what is different. What is different on this side of the face from that side of the face? So strike yourself a divide line with a tool or a piece of string or a piece of wire or whatever and then look at the face objectively and try oops try to decide if no that was better try to decide if you like one side better than the other and what you have to do to make this side look like that side. Now I can see that again the shape of this eye is very I want to say fish shaped. It's an uh, ellipse whereas this shape has taken on more of a, um, a natural human eye shape. This is still looking a little alien to me and I can see my pupil here has a little bit more space above it with the, the lid and this side needs to have a little more flesh brought in right here just like I'd had to over here and it needs a lot more on this side on the top um, 
I may need to carve away a little bit of this lower lid. So I'm going to do that. And sharp, 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 sharp. Oh, there we go. A little sharp tool. Okay, so always keep looking at both sides. And remember, you are comparing the inside of this eye to the inside of that eye, not the outside of that eye. So what you're starting off with is looking at right here and right here. And this side has the tear duct and this side doesn't. So you're just going to have to imagine the tear duct there. I'm looking at this line right here and where this lid crosses the iris. So I can see that right here is a little thick. And go very carefully. You just want to shave the tiniest little bit off at a time. And make sure that your tool is sharp so that it's shaving and not gouging. And just keep looking. Are we there yet? How much of this eye here is uncovered versus how much of that eye there is uncovered? So I could probably take a little bit over here still. Okay. That looks right. Now, this corner needs to come up to here. Oops. Let's get that powder out of there from earlier when I was doing a little bit of sanding. I can see here, I still need to sand that down. So I'm going to make sure I don't forget by marking it. Oh, not with a Sharpie. Come on, we know better. Just might take that, that little mark there, just to remind me before I seal this to paint it. I want to take that down a little bit. Okay, uh, this lip has a little blemish spot here that I need to address. All right, back to the eye. Sorry, my mind sometimes wanders. Always keep your brush clean. I mentioned that before. Not too much water. A little bit of water go a long way. Okay, so we'll do the inside of the eye here and I'm just going to wet it a little bit. Okay. And the wetter the clay is with this, the better because, like I said, water is your glue. It lifts those fibers up and lets them mesh themselves together. Okay, I'm going to go upside down. I probably won't use all of the clay I just dropped in here, but I might. We'll see. Okay, I want it in here and come across the lid here. And this is just me trying to achieve symmetry at this point. So I'm constantly looking from here to here. And you can see it's not sticking, and that's because it needs a little bit more water. That other surface needs to be wet for the new clay to stick to it. Okay, dry the brush. And smooth it on around. Now, 
Better. We're getting there. Okay. Now that corner. Well, let me make sure this is bonded down into the eye itself. Okay. I'm going to make the little pocket for the tear duct just by pushing this back a little more around it. That almost made a tear duct itself. That's pretty good. Okay, now we need a teeny little piece of clay again. That's probably twice as much as I need. Little, little ball. I have to wash my hands shortly. They're already getting gunky. Pick up those little hard pieces of clay off your hand. Nope, too big. <clears throat> Let's get an assist here from the razor blade. Too messy. The fingers are too messy. It's not very useful. Okay. Oopsie. Picked up hair. My fault. Wiped my hands on the jeans. Okay. There we go. Drop that in there. I think it was Mark, Mark Dennis, who was the one who uh, <laughs> had that idea to just drop the little ball in the hole. I was like, I have spent many years trying to force my tools to make a tiny little round-ish ball in the hole in the corner of the eye. And he goes, just make a little ball and drop it in there. <laughs> oh, God. I, I had to control to keep myself from laughing because it was so simple and yet the absolute perfect way to do it. And I was laughing at myself for it, the fact that it never occurred to me to try that. Okay, now I can see I need use that other little piece of clay I still had out here to <clears throat> add oh god nope 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 come on water come out come on too much water in there okay I got it Oh, sorry. I just spaced that completely. My next door neighbor just got a new big dog behind them when the new neighbor moved in. And her big dog and their big dog stand back there and snarl at each other like crazy. I will probably delete that entire space out while I stuck my face out the window. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay, 
Now for the outer corner. Over here. And the wet over here. A little more clay. And there we go. Okay. And I'm getting that old lady look in the corner here again. Don't like that. That's too much. Let's see if I can smooth that. <clears throat> what I might actually need to do is outer clay that just went on there. So it's making her look old. Well, I'll have to sand that because that's not not making me happy. Sorry. Concerned for the neighbor. Three big dogs and she's a rather small lady. Trying to control those dogs. It's hard enough controlling her own, let alone the two on the other side of the fence. Okay, and a little in the corner on the bottom as well, I think. Let's see. I don't know how much of that I'll need. that in a minute. Now you see you can just stick it in there and because the rest of it is very solid you can very easily make that nice sharp corner whereas when all of the clay is soft it's not so easy. One little poke too much and you now have a big hole that you have to uh, figure out how to contend with too much water again. Okay. Do you want to make sure these lines are smooth and flat? I think those tear duct beads might be too big for my liking. Some of that back out. Yeah, it was too big. I'm always alone in the studio when I'm working, so talking, remembering to talk. <laughs> is a little bit alien still even though I've made a number of these videos I still feel strange sitting here talking to myself but I know eventually someone will be watching these so I'm trying to instruct you on what I'm doing. Again, making sure if you can't see what I'm doing that I have explained it the best I can in words. 
as I'm doing it. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, I kind of don't like the tip of her nose. I think I like it okay on camera. But it's pretty flat and shapeless. It's got a good profile though. But I might bump it up just a little bit. Give it a little bit of a button tip. A little water on there. I say, is that enough? rid of the excess water. Oh, there I go. I'm trying to see what I'm doing and I'm taking it away from where you can see what I'm doing. It is a balancing act, let me tell you. Okay, and I'm just smoothing that little bit of extra clay onto her nose. And I think that just softened the tip of her nose a little bit. The coloring is off right this second, but... Yeah. That's better. I like that better. Tiny little drop of water. Just to aid in smoothing that into the bridge of the nose. Yeah, it was looking a little too blunt, like a botched nose job. Not natural. There was also a little tiny hairline crack right there along the edge of her nose. And I just took a little teeny bit of clay like that. Wet the brush. I'm going to fill this little gap on her mouth right here just to show you bit more of a gap right there than I would like and you just take and roll the clay out real thin try to get the smallest amount you can lay it on there like that and with your damp brush just push it into the crack and what it'll do is and then lay the brush sideways what it'll do is uh, Press it down into the groove without altering the sculpting that you already did. Okay, and if you have another one that you want to get rid of, like on this side, cuts just a little more than I want it to. I'm going to repeat. Push that clay in with the tip of my brush. You can push it along. Just jam it in there. 
It'll only go in the crack because it's super, super soft. And then you can go backward against it until it... I see, I picked up a little black speck right there. Get rid of that while the getting's good. Okay. All right, now... Let's see, anything else about the mouth I don't like? I see here on the jaw, I don't know if you can see it, this side has a little more meat right here than this side. Turn it around and confirm, a lot of it is light. Okay, there's definitely more meat right here, actually a substantial amount. So... I now have to decide which side I like better. So it actually, if you put it on your screen and have it up there, do you like that face better? And I'm asking myself, do you like that narrow jaw better or would you prefer this side? This side? Or that side. This side. Or that side. Huh. Well, let's see. It is pronounced, so I'm going to have to do something about it. I think. I like the side with more clay versus the side with less. So here we go. We're going to add some more clay. Just right here the, where the molars would be on that side of the face. All right. I'm going to wet this a little bit. Because it's drying out from being out of the package in there. Make sure it's all soft. Alright, I'm going to stick it on there where I think I need more clay. Try to get it in just the right spot. Okay. And now brush. Yeah, a lot of paper clay can be done. Paper clay uh, sculpting and smoothing can be done with a paintbrush because it's such a easy clay to work with. All right, I don't have. I'm not in view on either one. Well, I will try to do this best I can so you can see. Um, you get accustomed to using your hands a certain way, and I use my thumb. <laughs> my thumb is the one I smooth with most often. All right, now I'm going to go up on the cheek because it doesn't really need more cheek. I think we're a little more symmetrical now. A little more water for smoothing. A little extra water just to help get all those fibers knit it into one another and get a smoother surface. I want nice, smooth, young lady skin, not old, bumpy, lumpy, wrinkly, old lady skin, like mine. <laughs> nope, I want nice young skin, don't we all?
And like I said, when you sand, which I'm not going to touch the top of the head, but I will go across the forehead here. When you sand, all those fibers stand up and you can come back with water after and wet your surfaces and just rub across them again with either your hand or your paintbrush and just lay all those fibers over again. Lay them down and it'll smooth them right out again and then it'll dry and go back to the same color that it had been. So don't worry that you're changing any colors because you're not. You're just laying all those fibers back down again, knitting them into each other. You have to take that off right there. Well, maybe not if I do the, uh, oops, I bumped the nose. Be more careful. There, I liked it just how it was. And I bumped it. It's okay. That's still better. A little button on the end of the nose. Smooth in the nose here. Add a teeny bit of clay right here. And I want it very, very wet. So I'm putting it in this little drop of water that's on the table. I'm going to pick it up with the paintbrush. And there's like a little mark here. It's more than I needed. Uh, not a mark, a, um, like a tool mark, an indentation. That's the word I'm thinking of. Just wet that. And there you go. It just dissolves into the hole. Brush gently across it and it's gone. Okay, but when this dries you're going to see that all those fibers that were standing up here, which if I could get this magnified you would see that they're all, it's all loose and powdery looking. But where you wet it, everything's laying down again. Nice and flat and smooth and ready for paint. Which I might as well do up here too because I have to sand. And... <clears throat> I know why because this is really wet clay here and my fingers are not wet. It's like, why am I dragging instead of smoothing? You need that water as like a, I don't know what the right word is. I want to say lubricant, but I don't know if that's the right word. Just so that your skin slides across it smoothly. You want a little bit of a sanding effect happening, but you also want to lay those fibers down, not just drag the clay. <clears throat> All right. I think that is it for the sculpting. Uh, let's try less light. Let's see. 
see if you can see. Pretty good. Happy with that. Now once this is fully dry, if I wanted to, I could pop this off the back and um, take these eyes out and have them angled to the left or the right or whatever. They will move from underneath, um, but I'm kind of happy with the way they are. And this will get uh, some sort of a collar here. She'll have hair. I may, um, I may use the other one of these to make a piece to go on her forehead sort of like that that mimics the look of this piece that was on top i might make some little pieces like this that'll come down here in the front sort of along the edge of the face as well kind of like that i don't know yet i haven't decided but yeah, that looks pretty cool or I'll just use jewelry or something. Maybe I'll throw that on there like that. Well, obviously not all of it. It's the thing. One of the things I love about making dolls is how much experimenting and trial and error can go into these. And they still come out looking really cool but it's all a process but I kind of like that anyway until next time that is a uh, paper clay face oh well that's it thanks for watching I appreciate uh, your taking the time to come and check out the video if you liked the video, if you could hit the like button, I, that would be awesome. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. If there's anything that you want maybe to see how it's made that I've made before, um, feel free to go to my website. It's oakartdolls.com. And um, if you see something in there you think is interesting and you want to know how I did it, send me a message and I'll see what I can do. And um, Oh, subscribe to the channel if and hit the little bell icon if you want to um, find out about future videos that I upload. Um, thanks again. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.